This video will discuss the Klopp-Iron equation in thermodynamics. So let's say we have two phases, phase alpha and phase beta, and those phases are in equilibrium with one another. So from our previous video on chemical potential, this means that the chemical potential of phase alpha at that given temperature and pressure is equal to the chemical potential of phase beta at that same temperature and pressure. All right, so what if we're changing the temperature and or the pressure of the system? So, and, the, and we want them to remain in equilibrium with one another. So this means that the partial derivative of the chemical potential of phase alpha with respect to temperature at constant pressure times the change in temperature dt plus d mu alpha dp, the derivative with respect to pressure at constant temperature times dp. This has to equal the same result for phase b. So how the chemical potential of A changes with respect to temperature and pressure has to be matched by the same sum of those derivatives for phase B. All right, for uh, a given phase, we saw that the chemical potential is equal to the molar Gibbs energy of that phase. So the partial derivative of the molar Gibbs energy of a given phase it, with respect to temperature from our previous videos is equal to the negative molar entropy of that phase. And the partial derivative of the molar Gibbs energy of that phase with respect to pressure at constant temperature is equal to the molar volume of that phase. So now we have that minus S bar alpha dt plus V bar alpha dp equals minus S bar beta dt plus V bar, sorry, V bar beta dp. So the changes, uh, the changes in the temperature and pressure must be matched by these molar entropies and molar volumes of the relative phases. So if I collect um, the dp and the dt to one side and then divide both sides by dt, what I can rearrange this equation into is that dp dt is equal to S bar beta minus S bar alpha molar entropy of phase B minus molar entropy of phase A, divided by V bar beta minus V bar alpha, the difference in molar volumes in the phases. And this is equal to, well, this is one phase, this is another, this is one phase, this is another. So that is the entropy change of transition between alpha and beta. And this is the molar volume change of transition between alpha and beta as well. Okay, so that would be that would be a final uh, finished equation, but we can take it a little bit further. We know that the uh, Gibbs energy is equal to the enthalpy minus temperature times entropy. So uh, the transition molar Gibbs energy is equal to the molar enthalpy of transition minus the temperature times the molar entropy of transition. And at equilibrium, the Gibbs energy of transition is equal to zero. If we're at any coexistence curve, the Gibbs energy of the two phases on that curve is equal to, is equal to one another. So the Gibbs energy change during a phase transition is going to be zero as the phases are in equilibrium. So delta trans H bar minus T delta trans S bar equals zero. So as we saw for entropy of transition, the molar entropy of transition is equal to the molar enthalpy of transition divided by the temperature. So that allows us to arrive at what is the Klopp-Iron equation. For a coexistence curve, if we want to alter either the temperature or the pressure, or compute the derivative of this coexistence curve with respect to temperature, we have dp dt equals the molar enthalpy of transition divided by the temperature of the transition times the molar volume change of transition. All right, so what does this imply about the shape of these various curves? So the molar uh, enthalpy change of phase transitions uh, defined in going in this direction, so solid to gas sublimation, uh, solid to liquid would be fusion, 
solid uh, liquid to gas vaporization. So the molar enthalpy change of those phase transitions is greater than zero in the direction of increasing temperature. If you want to sublimate, melt, or boil a substance, that is always going to require an input of heat. It is always endothermic, so delta H bar of transition is always positive. All right, um, the change in the molar volume going from a solid to a gas or a liquid to a gas, sublimation and vaporization, is always going to be greater than zero. The molar volume of a gas, the gas will expand to take up the volume of its container. The gas is always going to be a higher volume than a condensed phase. And for melting, for fusion, going from solid to liquid, usually that's greater than zero as well. Notable exception being uh, going from solid water to liquid water. Ice has a lower density. <clears throat> ice has a lower density and thus a higher molar volume than liquid water. And of course, the temperature at which these transitions occur is always going to be positive. So typically, we're always going to have positive, positive, and positive values in this equation. So this means if you want to change the pressure. If you change the, the pressure at which a transition occurs, you're almost always going to increase the temperature at which that transition occurs as well. So the clop iron equation tells us that these coexistence curves, the slope of them versus temperature is almost always going to be positive. The notable exception being at water, where delta v of, uh, delta v var of fusion for water is less than zero. So for water, this slope of this line actually goes backwards. So that's the clop iron equation. This is valid over small regions of temperature change, small regions of volume change. Uh, in, the next, in the next video, we're going to look at uh, an extension to this equation where we can use it over a wider range of temperature changes to see what the coexistence curve is as a function of temperature and pressure.